Hello and welcome to another episode of uh, Knowledge Enthusiast Reacts, or in, the, in this case, Comments on, um, with the uh, historical misconceptions for you to bring up during family dinner from Salmonella Academy, one of my uh, most favorite channels on YouTube. Um, it's a bit sad that they did not put out the new video for a few months now, but hey, maybe they will. Um, and yeah, historical uh, misconceptions uh, is, a, is a huge thing because um, in history, the um, all we know about history is mostly based on accounts from people who lived there, first-hand accounts, if you uh, will, or second-hand accounts from, uh, in German, we, we say Zeitzeugen, which means um, time... Uh, uh, witnesses um, who may or may not um, accurately um, depict what is happening around them. Then we have those who um, maybe write down history they were taught, um, but do it decades or even centuries later. Um, and then there is um, the part of history where you maybe dig up something um, and interpret it. Just just put out theories on what it might be. So uh, misconceptions, sorry, misconceptions are a, a very fun thing to um, look at because with all this, <clears throat> then. Um, if at one point you have a theory about something and you spread these uh, uh, theories, um, it may get stuck in the head of people, even though they might be disproven um, with modern uh, technology, with modern uh, knowledge, with new accounts that were found, with um, new context, um, context they were put in. So yeah. Um, Short introduction, my name is Ossi Isborn, I'm 31 year old, um, former history student without degree and former video game journalist. I am from East Germany, but I wa uh, was raised and live now in Hamburg, Germany. And um, this channel is about learning together. Um, I have already seen this video, but um, as I said, it's uh, one of my favorite creators on YouTube and I might even be able to say something about some things and um, the video is five minutes uh, 44 long so maybe this video won't pass the one hour mark like the last videos i put out here so yeah let's start um, and not talk that much this episode of salmonella academy is brought to you by skillshare I love the intro. hey kid yeah you I just got off the phone with the big man upstairs and he told me that I need to clear a few things up around here. So without further ado, here's 10 pieces of malarkey that you might still be spreading. Number one, nobody was ever burned to death at the Salem Witch Trials. Um, yeah, Salem Witch Trials um, in, in Europe, it's, it's not that big of a thing because um, if I am not completely wrong, Salem is is a town or a village in the U.S. and uh, but the Salem witch trials are a, a very huge thing. Um, but it's it's not the the only account of of witch hunting. Um, there were several um, accounts of witch hunting in in Europe as well, um, mostly in Great Britain, France, and uh, modern day Germany, the Holy Roman Empire. With uh, in the Holy Roman Empire uh, in in the Middle Ages, uh, if you were suspected to be a witch, you would uh, possibly there were a few um, trials you you could go to. Uh, one of those was um, you were tied to a chair and then you were um, uh, pushed into the water tied on that chair if you sink and die then congratulations you're not a witch but you are also dead if you survive you are a witch and will therefore be um, killed um, as far as i know n no one ever survived this and this might in itself be a misconception um, 
there we have our info uh, text box and uh, i will do research after um i i recorded this and will put additional information and clarifications and uh, corrections there so um if i just talk bullshit then yeah um but uh, burning people to death was a real thing so you the most prominent one will uh, most likely be um joan of arc or um johanna of orleans um which was um suspected to be a witch i think uh, was one of the reasons why she was killed um but the most important reason was um that she inspired the french people during the hundred years war to to fight against the british and uh, let them or according to legend um led them even to some um, victories and um <clears throat> she were then uh put on trial by the british after she was um uh betrayed by her own people and um delivered to the british where uh, was put on trial and uh burned on the stakes and in germany um there are some accounts or maybe this is also uh, misconceptions but um, also witches would burn on stakes um, which being in itself another of these possible tries with the same um, uh, thinking behind it if you survive you are a witch if you die congratulations you aren't but you are also dead so um, this this might be a very specific misconception he brings up here now um, but let's continue of the accused, 15 died in prison, 19 were hanged, and one was squished to death. That last one is way more interesting than any cremation, by the way. Dude was a badass. His name was Giles Corey. He was 81 years old and so done with the town of Salem's garbage that he wouldn't even dignify the trial with a plea. So the town stuck him between two boards and stacked rocks on top of him in an effort to draw out a confession. But every time they tried to get something out of him, all he would say was, More weight. This went on for three solid days until he finally died, never giving any indication as to whether or not he was a witch. I, I will also um, look this up and if I find something, um, I will also put it there. And uh, because this actually is a very, very interesting um, story. And uh, if it's if it's true, then this guy really, really was was a badass. Um, but it might also be um, some type of legend, like with um, Rasputin. So I will look it up. I will actually. Up. But um, with Salmonella, most of the things he uh, talks about sound crazy, but um, turn out to be act actually true. So um, until I, I read otherwise, I, I will believe this. And um, yeah, it's, it's I, I don't think amazing is the right word because um, it, it's still someone dying, but, but with dignity, let's say, let's say uh, with dignity. Solid days until he finally died, never giving any indication as to whether or not he was a witch. One can only wonder. Number two, the OG Buddha wasn't the obese guy. That's Budai, a Chinese folk character meant to represent Maitreya, aka future Buddha. Now this shirt is double sad. Number three, Buddha wasn't a god either. He was just a guy. But is is this um what what do you want, cat? But um is is this really a misconception though um because yeah when you um count the world religions then uh most people would say the abrahamic religions like um, islam christianity and, and judaism and then hinduism and then uh, most would also say buddhism even though at least around the people i know most know that buddhism isn't a religion but more a way of life more more a philosophy if you if you um uh, want and um they also know that buddha might have actually lived but was never seen as a god but uh, not not even particularly as as a as a philosopher he was just seen as an amazing guy who according to legend sat under a tree and and uh, then um was um enlightened and um 
founded the way of life that that buddhism is today um without ever claiming or without ever the intention behind it that it would be um some kind of religion um and yeah the um original uh, i i guess it's it's depending on where you look at if you look at the buddhism in india in china or in japan or in other regions um you see fat buddhas and you see skinny buddhas and um, you have more or less the same story behind it but in some stories he was always always fat in some stories he um was always skinny in some stories he changed from one to another um but i think the what what he is referring to is the official um buddhism as it is practiced in 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 china today um but um, again i will put it in the info text box um so let's yeah this shirt is double sad number three buddha wasn't a god either he was just a guy named gautama now this shirt is triple sad number four ever heard of a vomitorium turns out no it's not a place where roman nobles would go to make room for more pheasant spleen and lobster eyelids it's just a big entrance way to the coliseums that hordes of peasants would spew out of number Th this is actually I believe only a misconception in Latin and English um, or not even Latin Latin parts of the world but only English parts of the world because the English word vomit is is to to puke out to to spill out and um, in, in German that would be um, kotzen or erbrechen which is a vastly different uh, word than than vomit so when you hear of vomitorium here then only if you if you're more or less fluent in english would be coming uh, the image of vomit to your to your brain um whereas if you would actually know something about the uh, about ancient history about um the um romans and stuff you might already know that uh the the vomitorium is something vastly different so i guess this misconception is pretty much um local eyelids it's just a big entrance way to the coliseums that hordes of peasants would spew out of and uh, actually in stadiums today the entrance ways um that you see um uh, where people go through to go to their seats um, are still sometimes called um, vomitoria. Lobster eyelids. It's just a big entrance way to the coliseums that hordes of peasants would spew out of. Number five, Washington never cut down a cherry tree in his youth. I don't get this one at all. Apparently it's supposed to paint the man in a good light somehow. It's like, Tyler, what the hell happened while we were gone? Where's the tree in the front yard? Oh yeah, that was me. Got bored. Just felt like vandalizing something, you know? Hey, what about my honest character? Number six. Um, this also is a very local uh, misconception because Washington is not that big of a deal here in Europe. Um, we know about him. We know about the American Revolution. Uh, we know not that much about um, the character of, of George Washington, especially not in his youth. Um, what I personally quote unquote no is um that he was said to had uh, have wooden teeth which was not that uncommon um at that time because um prostates for for teeth were mostly done with um with wood or animal parts whereas in Europe and I think um only in slightly later times um during the Napoleonic Wars, for example, um, I just recently learned that fallen soldiers um, would be looted and not only their clothes and their weapons and stuff, but also their teeth, um, which were then sold as teeth proth uh, pro prosthetics to um, those who lost the teeth or uh, lost all of their teeth or had rotten teeth or something. Uh, maybe in America this wasn't wasn't uh, that much of a uh, thing at that time and 
they used wood. But I never heard about him cutting down the tree. Um, all I heard was that um, Abraham Lincoln was said to be honest. While we were gone, where's the tree in the front yard? Oh yeah, that was me. Got bored. Just felt like vandalizing something, you know? Hey, what about my honest character? Number six, the pyramids weren't actually built by slaves. These workers were respected members of society. They ate meat and worked in three-month shifts, and even got to be buried right next to the tomb after their death. Which is partly true. Um, so when we talk about pyramids, we usually talk about the... Um, pyramids of, of Giza, um, around the Great Pyramid of Giza, um, which were built more or less um, 2500 to 2700 BC, um, more or less in that um, scale. And um, there are huge um, structures with um, huge um, stone um blocks that um, had to be transported um, all the way up and the Egyptians actually used various um, genius um, uh, things to accomplish this to get them this this uh, in, in their shape to get them from the um, from the from the source to uh, the actual building site and to get them on top they had ramps and everything and um the the planning of the pyramids and uh the the oversight of the construction was done by highly paid um members of society by experts um because it 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 had to be perfect and you can look at a pyramid today and and measure it and all sides will be roughly the same size it will be um, more or less um, face um, in the capital directions um, and so on and so on but part of the workforce because you need a lot of people to build um, something you need a lot of strength um, to build some uh, something like that some of them were slaves um, maybe a minority not all of them uh, and with the most workers being actual paid workers who eat meat, like you just said, and um, some of them even were buried um, beside or uh, next to the pyramids, but not and not the entirety of the workforce um, was done by paid labor somewhere unpaid labor, um, as far as I know. Um, I could be could be wrong, and I could be a victim of this misconception as well. And uh, it might also depend on uh, what pyramid you are looking at. Um, some even were believed to be buried inside the pyramids because there were secret entrances and secret um, ways who will be blocked with uh, with um, with a huge block in the inside. Um, which would be released from from above and then um, go all the way down to the point where it seals the grave. Um, so you because um, they always were afraid of of, of grave robbery. Um, and some of those who built these um, secret passages, these secret ways in and out and within the pyramid, um, where actually they were um, cut their th uh, tongues out and some were buried inside the pyramids as far as as I um, as I was told um, again I will put it in the text info text box um, with, with more information but yes most of the um, builders might have been paid workers and worked in three month shifts and even got to be buried right next to the tomb after their death matter of fact that's more than we can save for the people working on man's greatest achievements today if i spent years of my life helping to build the space station you're damn right i'd want the salmonella memorial corpse receptacle floating along right next to it that would be amazing number seven the great wall of china is not the only man-made object visible from space i don't know where you dipshits got this one from first of all 
tall, there's no way you could see it with the unaided eye. The wall is like 30 meters thick at most, while the distance to outer space is generally recognized to be 100 kilometers up, known as the Karman line. To give some perspective, that's like me holding up a standard size guitar pick from across the entire length of a football field and asking you what color it is. Also, there are plenty of man-made objects that are way bigger in terms of local surface area than the Great Wall, so even if it was visible, there's no way it would be the only one. Number yeah, I will actually try to, to find out after um, when I do the editing of the video how this even came to be. Also, who who was the first one to say that the Great um, Wall of China is the only man-made object visible from space? Um, if it was someone at the time the wall was built, then maybe, okay, we can cut them some slack. But um, there is, with with modern knowledge, there is no way that anyone could actually believe that and believe that it's uh, it is the the only one because um as you just said there are way bigger um objects on earth man-made objects on earth um that you would be able um to see from space more likely than uh, the wall and actually when you go to google earth and um look at a satellite image and then tell me where where the wall is because it is um already um also in the mountain chain so um at some points it is very very hard to distinguish what um, the actually mountains are and what the wall is um i might even uh, put up a picture right uh, right here uh, right now of a satellite image of the um, area where the great wall is and then you have fun finding the Great Wall um, and I will put it in the uh, text info box uh, what distance we are now so you can uh, see what what um, what you can see whereas I will put an, an image from, from another man-made object uh, right now uh, with also the distance right here and uh, then you can uh, tell me what is more likely to be seen from space so yeah surface area than the Great Wall. So even if it was visible, there's no way it would be the only one. Number eight, you might have heard this one before. You know, Hitler was a jerk and all, but hey, he made the Autobahn, so at least he was efficient. Actually, Hitler didn't create the Autobahn. It was already there. He just helped expand it into newer territory. In a similar vein, Mussolini didn't make the trains run on time. With most of Italy's infrastructure repairs happening before his rise to power in 1922, and even then they weren't nearly as punctual as he'd like you to believe. So unfortunately, you're gonna have to find something else to like about these fascists. Like Hitler's elegant way of speaking. Or the way Mussolini says spaghetti. Number nine. Yeah, um, you, you you need to know the um, Hitler came to power in 1933. Um, the automobile was invented in Germany way way before in the 19th century, um, around what was it 1890 or something like that, um, with um, streets already um, being built for for the use with with um, horse carriages and um, so you, you have a lot of time in between um, with the need of roads uh, for for automobiles um, especially when the first world war came around and um, you had to do troop transports the the whole roman road system was more or less um, built to be able to um, comfortably uh, transport troops from A to B. Um, so the same, um, not exactly the same, but this is one of the reasons why the Autobahn was built in the first place. Um, with the other reason being that there are automobiles now and you can travel um, farther you can travel more distant you have um, transportation that you can do with a train or with a with an um uh, with a truck and uh, what hitler did was he one of his promises he made was he would give everyone a job so um, his goal was zero uh, percent unemployment 
and to reach that he had to find jobs and not everyone could serve in the military especially in those years before germany actually pimped the military um so one of the huge projects were the autobahn um which requires a lot of workforce which has um which is needed all around germany so um you can recruit people from all around germany to do these jobs and give everyone a job who is unemployed um and i'm not sure if he actually reached the goal of zero percent unemployment but i think he came very close mostly due to the autobahn which is why he is uh, most not most remembered for it, but on the uh, quote unquote good things he did, um, this is more most likely the most uh, what he's remembered for the autobahn. Um, I don't know where else this misconception would um, come from, but it is also a misconception here in Germany. So um, even Germans would sometimes say that um, Hitler built the autobahn, which again is wrong. Bellini says spaghetti. Puskeri! Number 9. Iron Maidens weren't actual torture devices used in medieval times. Basically what happened is, some archaeologists in the 1800s saw an old metal coffin and some spikes and said, yo, wouldn't it be wildin' if we put these things up in here, so that way if someone goes in it, they get poked in their bits? You are a sick man, Cornelius. I like it. Into the museum it goes. At least Iron Maiden was real. They were as real as it gets. Still are. And don't you forget it. Number 10. Um, I think this point is very debatable because um, first thing, first, first uh, things first, Iron Maidens are a thing. And they were used um, and the... Uh, so we have evidence for them being used um from the 19th um, th century onwards so we can say pretty sure at that point they were used maybe inspired by those who um, they found before and um, thought they were from the middle ages um, the most um, prominent uh, most famous um, iron maiden is the nuremberg iron maiden which is believed to um, where uh, there has been a torture device where you put someone in. Um, they're not quite sure if there were spikes in it, if there were um, knives in it, if there were something else in it. Um, and when uh, the victim was poked, they would bleed out. They, they it would not go so deep in that um, they would puncture the the heart or the lung or any other vital um, organ. And once they bleed out, there were a mechanism uh, which opened the floor or something, and then they dropped down in in the river, floating um, below the um, torture chamber, and. It is still highly debated if Iron Maidens were a thing or not, but um, there are even evidences of similar devices being used um, as far back as two, uh, 2000 BC in Egypt, um, where you had sarcophag sarcophaguses um, with actual wooden or iron spikes in it, um, which were used as uh, or is are believed to have been used as a torture device or as a killing device um, or uh, some ca other kind of device um, yeah but but this misconception might not be a misconception but um, there is no no real consent on that so it's un uncertain but the the nuremberg iron maiden um might have been actual a thing and was discovered i think in the 16th uh, uh, century and uh, used in the 14th century or something like that um i will put it in the info text box and um yeah let's let's uh, continue uh but yeah they were as real as it gets still are 
Don't you forget it. Number 10. Einstein never failed math. He had mastered both integral and differential calculus by the age of 15. 99% chance this one was just made up to make glue eaters feel better about themselves. Well, congratulations, Dimitri. Looks like you failed pre-algebra for the third time. Afraid he still can't graduate. Well, hey, that means I'm still on par with famous smart science man, so, uh, yeah. Worship me. So it just goes to share that we've all got a lot to learn about the world around so actually this this is also a very very huge misconception here in germany um mostly due to the fact that we have a children's entertainment um program which is called um, schloss einstein or castle einstein which revolves around an um I don't know the English word for internat. Uh, you know, a school where where you also live, you, so you don't go home. Um, I will I I will put the English word right here, right there, and um, so the uh, and the, the the title song says selbst uh, selbst Einstein hatte nur eine vier in Mathe, which translates to even Einstein had only a four uh, in math, which in the American uh, grade system would be a D. Um, so, which would actually not mean that he failed in math, um, but um, he he wasn't good either because the best grade you can have is a one and the worst grade is a six and with a five or six um, you would fail the class and um, so this this helped spread this myth um, all around uh, especially children because um, the series uh, run, uh, runs since the 19th and is still running today i think um, I'm, I'm i'm not in that age anymore um, and I think the misconception comes from that um, Einstein, who went to school in Ulm, which is in modern day Bavaria or Schwaben. I'm not quite sure. It's it's more or less right on the on the border. Um, and this is this is what I re remember. Uh, that that I think that was told me was that Einstein was a genius even as a child and he was great in math but the actual math class um, in school he had struggles not because he didn't understand it but because of uh, I think he had he struggled with uh, with the teacher or he struggled with um, the others being too slow you know like like today when when you are hyper intelligent and you go to a, to a public school like like that um and and all around you you feel bored maybe and and you do stupid stuff um even though you are highly intelligent and you understand everything you get bad grades something like that um which could totally be wrong but um i think that's that's why this myth came to be I, I i have no idea what else could have um made this myth a thing but uh, i will do my research on it hello aussie from the future here and um, usually i would put um, the clarification or correction just in the text box there but in this case um I was so eager to know how the whole myth around um, Einstein being bad in math um, or in school started uh, that I just went ahead and looked at his um, Maturitätszeugnis, which is the A-level degree, which he did in Switzerland. Um, he was born in Ulm, uh, by the way, and went to school in Munich and um he actually cancelled school because he missed his family who was uh who moved to to milan um and then he went to switzerland because there he could um, go to the gymnasium and uh, reach the a level even without previously having finished school and as you see here um this is uh his actual um uh, final final degrees 
um, which you can also find here. This is the original, but the picture is very, very um, small. Um, it's from the website legendenunterderlupe.wordpress.com. I will full, uh, put the full link in the description. And uh, this is from einstein-website.de, which I will also put in the description. And uh, the thing is, as I said, in Germany, the best grade you can have is a one, which is an A in, in America. And uh, the worst you can have is a six, which is an F in America. And um, if we look at algebra here, which is mathematics um, with uh, together with geometry, in both cases, Einstein has a six. But in Switzerland, the grading system, at least at that time, I don't know if it's um, still that way today, is actually the other way. So as you can uh, see here, um, six means sehr gut, which means very well, with one being uh, unbrauchbar, which means um, uh, yeah, very bad. Um, uh, not useful is the literal um, uh, translation. So this might be the starting point for um, the myth that Einstein was bad, or at least one of the starting points together with the fact that he um, canceled school, but in that school he always had good grades as well, um, and he was um, exceptionally well. Um, there is... Um, one last thing, um, there is also the thing that when he studied, I think it was, um, that he, like I, like I said, um, was um, actually more or less bored by the way mathematics were teached and um, did at some point not even bother to go to um, the, the classes. Um, which um, might be the um, third puzzle piece um, to put this myth together. Um, so yeah, there, there you have it. Um, Einstein was a great, um, great um, student, but uh, maybe the myth came around because um, a misconception in the grading system or the uh, not understanding the grading system in the Switzerland um, compared to Germany. So uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go ahead and conf uh, continue the video. Um, but yeah, that this is uh, this is especially uh, in Germany um, a real misconception and and is accepted as as widespread knowledge. So um, almost everyone you, you would ask in Germany um, would would. Um, subscribe to the idea that Einstein uh, failed math in school um, for one reason or another. Around us. That's why you need to go to Skillshare. Yeah, Skillshare is an online learning community with over 20,000 classes in technology, design, business, and more. I will Premium membership gives you unlimited ad. access to high quality um, classes yeah. on must know topics so you can improve your skills, Mis unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. They've got great courses in graphic design and animation, which I've clearly already mastered. I mean, check this out. <laughs> But I'm sure you could get a lot of use out of them. You can also learn plenty of more recreational skills, like how to solve a Rubik's Cube or how to play chess really well. Join the millions of students already learning chess. on Skillshare today with a special offer just for my, my viewers my where you can get two teacher. months of Skillshare completely free. To sign up, go to skl.sh slash samo. Again, go to skl.sh Slash Samo As to get the videos from 2018, this promo code will already, uh, already have been expired. Act now I guess. for this special offer and start learning today. Anyway, till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and thank you for watching. Bye bye. So yeah, mis uh, historical misconceptions, um, and and these were only ten examples. There are a lot more um, historical misconceptions. For example. One thing, um, I, I actually have a book uh, which is called um, Besser Wissen für, nee, uh, Wissen für Besserwisser, which is knowledge for those who know better. Um, 
And in that book, um, it is also stated that like this, the the famous storm of the Bastille in um, 1789, yeah, 1789, which um, was the starting point for the French Revolution, might actually not have happened at all. At least not in the sense that it was a storm that the people um, armed themselves and and took the fortress by force um as you would believe today as as the uh misconception is um but rather they took the f the the fort by more or less uh diplomatic um arguing um they gathered around and um just uh just talked to the to the to the um headmaster of the fort um until they were um let in and took it that way um because i think the headmaster did not see any reason in fighting and um another misconceptions which we all know is um about christopher columbus wanted to prove the earth, uh, earth is round which is factually wrong and has been proven wrong multiple times um as well as the the horns on the helmets of uh, vikings or um so much other stuff and uh yeah if you um, know some misconceptions you uh, believed at some point uh, let me know in the comments um you will find the link to the original video in the description and um, if you liked the video please leave me a like if you disliked it then please leave me a dislike um but if you liked it i would uh, be happy if you could also subscribe um, and also subscribe to salmonella because he makes great content and yeah that's that's it for today and uh, see you next time bye bye